Welcome back to another rebuild I have for you guys here today on Madden 20. Today it's going to be a fantasy style rebuild of the Panthers. Now a few things before I really get into this one. As you can tell, there's no face cam for this video. Uh, the reason for that is because I'm house sitting for my cousin uh, for like a week and I forgot to bring my face cam. That's entirely on me, but you know, stuff happens. Also, I forgot to bring my pop filter for my microphone. So if the quality of the microphone sounds a little bit worse, that is why. And there's really nothing I can do about either of those things. But at least this video is in 60 FPS. So I mean, there's a plus. Also, really quickly, there are two dogs here that I'm watching. So if you hear anything running around in the background, they have a hardwood floor. So the dogs, you can pretty easily hear them moving. That's what that's going to be. Now, <laughs> let's get into the team. So, so, Teddy Bridgewater is now the starting quarterback here of the Panthers. He's certainly not a bad quarterback. I think he can do fine given a starting job once again. He has really good stats here in the game. He's a 75 overall. I feel like he can get the job done fairly well. They also do have Christian McCaffrey, the highest rated running back in this game, and I'm pretty sure the highest rated running back in Madden 21. I'm pretty certain he's like six overall points higher than the next highest. I'm pretty sure he's a 99 and then Derrick Henry is like a 93 or something along those lines. Uh, Christian McCaffrey is insane. He does everything incredibly well, I guess, aside from trucking, but that doesn't even really matter. That's not the type of running back he is. He is a fantastic receiving back. He has incredible agility, great carrying, great juke move, good ball carrier vision. You guys all know about Christian McCaffrey. He is such a good weapon. And then the receivers, DJ Moore, superstar development, still very young, 85 overall for him. He's going to develop incredibly well for us. Robbie Anderson signed with this team. He's not a bad deep threat option here for Teddy Bridgewater. And then they do have Curtis Samuel. So they have a lot of speed at the receiver position. I think I'm gonna have Curtis Samuel play the slot and then have DJ Moore be the one. Samuel's probably going to be the number two and the slot. I think he's going to develop a lot better than Robbie Anderson would. The offensive line for this team isn't really all that solid here in Madden, but it is a fantasy style rebuild, so I can fix those holes very easily. Ian Thomas is the starting tight end, but I actually might go out and trade for another receiving option there, just because it's very easy to trade for tight ends, and why not make this team as good as possible? On the defense then, they drafted a lot of uh, players this past draft on this side of the ball. Derek Brown was their first selection. I gave him superstar development. I think that's fair. He is a dominant defensive tackle, and he should play well for this team in real life. Yuter Gross Matos out of Penn State. I gave him star development. I feel like that's fair as well. A lot of people thought he was going to go in the first round, but he fell to the second round. They also were able to land Jeremy Chin, I believe, in the second round. I stuck with normal for him. I could have given him star, but but I feel like it's a little bit cheesy to keep giving all these players star development and whatnot, especially at safety. I feel like they already get a lot of experience points as it is, and I feel like development trade upgrades aren't too rare for safeties, so I'm going to leave them at normal, see if he can go up, uh, you know, naturally and progress that way. But they do have Brian Burns, who's still considered a rookie here for us. He's an 80 overall. He is fantastic, incredibly fast at the defensive end position. Dante Jackson, Eli Apple, and Troy Pride Jr. are the cornerbacks. Pride, another rookie they just selected. Troy Boston's the free safety, and then they have Tahir Whitehead, Shaq Thompson, and Marquise Haynes at a linebacker. I didn't mention him either, but Kawan Short is here. He's a very good defensive tackle, uh, but the issue is he is old, so we're probably going to have to replace him in a short period of time. But let's hop into some trades. I want to trade away a couple of the older players on this team. I may even trade Kawan Short. I don't exactly know at the moment, but we'll make something work here. Also, I've kind of stopped worrying about contracts with a lot of these. Like, I don't think most of these contracts are like correct of the new players on uh, this team, but I'm really not gonna worry about it. Madden's very strange with making rosters. It makes it very difficult for people to make realistic rosters, so I'm just gonna kinda let it go. But Russell Okung, I'm definitely gonna trade him $16 million. All right, very simple first trade here. I'm giving the Broncos Seth Roberts, Obata, and Scarlett for their first round draft pick. This next trade here is going to be Russell Okung, Mike Davis, Corn Elder for Evan Ingram and Will Hernandez. That's honestly one of my favorite trades to make in this game because both of those players are so easy to get. Okay, so I'm actually re-recording the audio for this one specific trade just because it has been announced what this team will be referred to as. So I am giving the Washington football team, Manhurts, Miller, and Whitehead for the first round draft pick. I'm just building up on the draft picks at this point, so I'm giving the Lions Showfield, Weatherly, and Kerr for their first round draft pick. Okay, I think that's going to be it for all of the trades. I know I got a lot of draft picks and not too many players, but it's okay. I think we still made the team better in general. Maybe not like for this first season because we traded away a lot of pieces, but at least for the future. We have an 80 overall team now, 84 offense, 76 defense. Now the offensive line got a little bit better with the addition of Will Hernandez. We do need a new left tackle, but I'm sure I can draft one fairly easily. Evan Ingram is a massive upgrade here at tight end. And then once again, I'm gonna have Curtis Samuel be the number two. I already made that switch before, but since I generated best lineup, it did switch. 
Uh, now on the defensive side, the linebacking core is very poor at the moment, but hopefully we can get some new players in the draft and whatnot. Uh, the defensive line is looking really good. A lot of young talent down there. We just need to replace Kawan Short at some point. I'm looking to draft another cornerback potentially and maybe a safety in this upcoming year. I'm not exactly sure what I'll target just yet. Of course, we're going to have to see how the season pans out, but I will see you guys again at the mid-season mark. Okay, let's see what the record's looking like here at week nine. We are three, three, and one. Uh, the Saints are undefeated, which is pretty cool, I guess, for them. 4-3 and three for the Buccaneers, 2-6 and six for the Falcons. Honestly, I wouldn't mind if we, like, lose out from here on out. Like, I don't really want to win too many games. I kind of just want the good draft picks at the moment. Um, but a quick look at the offense. A couple players are looking a bit different. Like, DJ Moore is up a little bit, I think, by, like, one overall point. Uh, same thing with Curtis Samuel over there. And then defensively, Brian Burns does have superstar development, if you somehow did not know yet. Uh, Gross Matos, it still says hidden, and that just happens every time you give uh, somebody star development. I don't know why it does that. It's glitched out, so it's not going to show until the end of the season. But, you know, the team is still in a pretty good spot, I think. Like, I don't really think we're going to win anything this season. I didn't go into the year anticipating to win. I kind of want this year to be like a little throwaway so we can get some new replacement, you know, players and whatnot. Uh, Joey Sly is actually our backup kicker. I'm going to keep Graham Gano, I guess. Why not? I'm not going to bring anybody back to the team on that list at the moment, but I will see you guys at the end of the season. Yeah, so we ended up not making it into the playoffs. Honestly, it's not the end of the world, but at least the Saints didn't go undefeated. We beat them in week 17. Uh, we finished 6-9-1. and one. So at the bottom of the division, 14-2 and two for the Saints, 9-7 and seven then from the Falcons and the Buccaneers. How did Teddy Bridgewater do? Just under 4,000 yards, 34 touchdowns, 8 picks. That's a really good year to have. Honestly, it's definitely not his fault, you know, for the losing record. Uh, Christian McCaffrey was incredible. Five yards per carry, 10 touchdowns, zero fumbles. Curtis Samuel had a really good year. 82 catches, 1,165 yards, nine touchdowns. DJ Moore, seven touchdowns. Evan Ingram gets eight. Okay, so the offense seems solid. Maybe the offensive line is struggling. Yeah, okay, so Dennis Daly is not playing well, but he's like a 60-something overall, so I can forgive that, but everybody else is doing well. We do have 118 tackles there for Shaq Thompson. We have 13 tackles for loss for Kawan Short, 12 for Brian Burns, who leads the team in sacks with 11. Yuter Gross Matos has eight. Four for Kwan Short, not too bad there. Three picks for Dante Jackson and Jeremy Chin. Okay, had a pretty good rookie season. Two for Kenny Robinson. He was actually the backup sub linebacker. So I guess that's why he got so many tackles, you know, being like technically the backup safety, you know. Eli Apple gets two picks. Shaq Thompson and Troy Pride Jr. each get one. We have no touchdown safeties or blocked kicks. I feel like that's happened a lot lately. <laughs> we were 11th in the NFL in offense. Defensively, we were 30th. Okay, so we were terrible in terms of yardage. Josh Allen is going to win MVP on an 8-8 eight eight team. That just seems really funny to me. Teddy Bridgewater, though, at number 6. Okay, so he actually played really well. The thing is, there's one incredible-looking quarterback in this class. I may still take him. I don't know if he's going to start this season. Maybe we'll just have a year behind Teddy Bridgewater. We'll have to figure it out when the time comes. Drew Brees is the Offensive Player of the Year, but Teddy Bridgewater at number 3. Look at this, the top three guys all from this division. That's pretty cool. Nobody else, then, from uh, the Panthers. The Defensive Player of the Year is Khalil Mack. I doubt we have any Panthers here. Yeah, I don't think so. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Kyler Murray. Anybody from the Panthers? I'm not seeing any Panthers players. The Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Isaiah Simmons, Brian Burns at number three, Jeremy Chin at number eight, Gross Matos at number nine. Okay, so sadly we didn't win any of those awards, but we got close with a couple of them. You know, I think there's potential to have some development trade upgrades with this team. Of course, we will see here at the Super Bowl week. Um, let me go ahead and spend the scouting points first, and then we'll see who wins. Uh, between the Seahawks and the Ravens. Okay, so I think the Seahawks are going to win. They're very good in Madden. Honestly, I think they play better than the Ravens do in this game. And the Seahawks do win, 33-27. to 27. All right. So we have the same players here, essentially, and I'm not going to bring any of them back to the team. Uh, Joey Sly is a good kicker, but... I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna worry about it. He's very good to have on your team in this game because he has incredible kick power. Like if you're actually playing uh, the games, but we have 60 million dollars to spend here in free agency. Chris Jones is probably the top guy, even though he just got a big contract in real life. Whatever, who cares? Um, I'm not gonna go after him anyway. I don't really think I want anyone in particular. Like I, I could use some tackle help, but there's never any good tackles in free agency. And yeah, Demar Dotson's the best one. I could technically use some interior uh, defensive lineman help because maybe then we can trade Kawan short, but I don't want to go after Chris Jones. I don't really need edge help at all. Like this team's really good in that department. I can use some linebackers, I guess. There are some pretty good linebackers in the, in the draft class though, so I don't really think I'm going to worry about any of these guys. Cornerback is always an issue, but again, like I feel like I can snag a corner in the class. Actually, there's not really many good cornerbacks, but 
we might be able to make it work. I entirely forgot to go over development trade upgrades, but let me do that here before we really advance to the draft. So Curtis Samuel is actually up to superstar. I kind of figured he would go up because he did have a really solid year. Did he like make the Pro Bowl or something? That would make some sense. He did make the Pro Bowl and he just went up to Superstar just during the week. It never really says why. <laughs> it's very random, but whatever. I'll take that development trade upgrade for sure. And then on the defensive side, anybody up in development trade? I don't think so, which is sort of sad. I was really hoping Jeremy Chin can do something. Maybe Shaq Thompson would have went up to uh, Superstar. It's okay though. Now I will see you guys in the draft. Okay, so I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this draft class looks like one of the more stacked draft classes I've had honestly all year. Um, I may actually have to trade up to take the player I want right away. Let me see. Do I think the Raiders are going to go quarterback? Because I cannot miss this quarterback. This guy looks like one of the best prospects I have ever seen in this game. Um, so they do still have Derek Carr. I don't think they'd go quarterback. They might go left outside linebacker. And I really want the one left outside linebacker here. So I think I'm going to trade up regardless. I might actually trade up twice. Uh, let me just find someone to give to the Raiders. Do you want Haynes? You do want Haynes. Okay, there we go. They certainly would have taken this left outside linebacker if I let them. Uh, but with this pick, I'm actually going to go quarterback because maybe I can make it to my pick again. Honestly, I probably won't be able to. I'm still going to go quarterback with this pick and then we'll figure out what we want to do next. But Lucas Palmer looks like one of the best players I have ever seen. 4-5-3 speed, first off. That's incredible. But he's first in everything. He has a 7 combine ridiculous top three skills welcome to the team this dude's a 77 with hidden rank number two we drafted him at number one i have such high hopes for this guy though he has 89 speed at 90 acceleration 86 agility really good throwing stats this guy i think is going to be a glitch now i'm looking for a left outside linebacker let me check out the vikings and the jags quick okay so neither of these teams should take this guy i really hope he doesn't get selected that would be very unfortunate so a middle linebacker was selected and the Jags go left end. Okay, so we can still take this left outside linebacker. Uh, this guy's going to be very good as well, I think, because he did win the Heisman. His talent is mid first round, so this is going to be a reach, but I'm banking on the fact he has a good development trait because he won the Heisman. So welcome to the team. He's a 75 with hidden, right? Number 13, we drafted him at number four. But if this guy turns out to be an X factor or just a superstar even, that is a fantastic draft pick because he's going to develop very well for us. Okay, so honestly, I'm at the point where I don't know what to take right now. There are a lot of good players left still. But there are also uh, some players later who I can wait on who look very good. Like, I'm looking at defensive tackle here. And there are three really good defensive tackles at the top. And then this guy who skipped the combine who could have a really good development trait. Um, but I kind of want one of these guys. He's only late first round, so I'm not going to take him. This guy is early first round. And this guy is early first round. But the thing is, I can definitely wait until my next pick to take those guys. So I probably shouldn't go... A defensive tackle now maybe cornerback and the only issue is like there aren't that great of cornerbacks this is probably the best one abram forest there's another first round talent corner but it's a late first round guy i think i'm actually going to take forest he might not be that great but i'm hoping he at least has hidden that would be really big here he has normal i kind of figured he would usually mid first round cornerbacks end up with normal that kind of sucks, but he probably will still, you know, start for us here. It definitely wasn't the best pick I could have made, but honestly, it's okay. I think we can uh, make up for it here because we're going to go with one of these defensive tackles. I really don't know which one to go with. Like, they're both very good. I guess I'll go with Chester Green because his top three skills look a little better and his combine is better. Early first round talent. This guy's early first round, right? Yeah, okay. I thought I looked at both of them, but I just wanted to make sure. So Chester Green, welcome to the team. He's a 78. He's the best player in the entire class. We took him at number 23. He's ranked number one. 92 strength, 79 block shed, 82 tackling. Yeah, this is a really solid defensive tackle. And now I'm going to trade Kawan short. I guess I shouldn't say now because I'm not going to do it like right this second. <laughs> I just mean like before next season starts, I'm going to be trading him. Um, and now with this pick, I guess I should go with a safety because I think safety is our next biggest need. And then I'm going to go after Armin Ross then. But Henry Conley looks like a really, really solid player. He's a 76 with a hidden. He was supposed to go early for his round, as you can see. Supposed to go number four. We landed him at number 45. This is definitely one of the best drafts I've had in a very long time. And now I think we can move on from Trey Boston. So we can clear some cap, potentially get some draft picks back again. And I don't think we're really losing all that much. Like I think this team is going to get better, even though I'm trading away uh, some of the starters. Now though, I'm going to go with a right tackle because we pretty desperately need some kind of offensive tackle and it's going to be Armand Ross. Welcome to the team. He's a 71 with normal, so he's not that great. 
but I still might try to play him at left tackle just to see how he does. Only player I have left is this middle linebacker, and this pick is going to be a reach, but I don't really care. He's a 61 overall, normal development. I guess he's decent depth. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just go to the end of the draft. Yeah, so this was definitely one of my better drafts, just based on value and whatnot. Like, we have a really, really good uh, first, like, six draft picks here. Every one of these guys is above a 70, and aside from this dude, all of these guys are at least a 75. That's a great way to start out a draft, and I think at least one of these dudes is going to have X Factor. I do think Cunningham will have that development trait. That would be huge. Um, but let's take a look at the rest of the class. So we have the number one player in the class, and it is the clear number one player because we also have the number two player. Again, the clear number two player in the class. We also have the number three player. I know he said number four. I know it said number four when we drafted him, but there's a bunch of people who are a 76 overall. But that's crazy. We drafted incredibly well here for us. We have a couple 75s as well. So, you know, this team is looking a lot better, I think. And especially for the future, this team is going to be insane. Okay, so I knew I wanted to trade away at least trade Boston and Kawan short. And I was looking for a cornerback. I couldn't really find any, you know, who I was able to trade for. But I also threw in Teddy Bridgewater to this trade. And I'm getting the Buccaneers first round draft pick and Ali Marpet. I know I said I was going to potentially start Teddy Bridgewater. Um, but I just want this rookie to get as much experience as possible. I kind of do feel badly. Uh, for Bridgewater because he's not a bad quarterback like he played really well and this would suck if that happened like in real life if he goes back to being a backup after having like a good year on the Panthers or something like that I highly doubt that's gonna happen um, but I'm sorry about that this is fantasy style so anything can technically happen and I know it's kind of strange but you know Teddy Bridgewater doesn't actually do anything backing up a rookie quarterback you know sometimes I kind of try to make that storyline um, but I think I'm gonna have Marpet play tackle maybe yeah, let's do that. He's going to play left tackle, and then Taylor Moten is going to move back to right tackle. I moved him to left tackle initially, but I'm going to shift him back over. All right, so this is going to be the team heading into the second season, and I think this team can make it into the playoffs. We have an 83 overall, 87 offense, 79 defense. So the defense did get a little worse after that trade, but honestly, I think we're in a pretty good spot still. On the offense, though, it looks a lot different. We have a new quarterback. We have a new left tackle. Um, I think this team is going to play really well, at least on this side of the ball. And then defensively, we added some new faces, like a new outside linebacker. We have a new defensive tackle and a new free safety. So yeah, definitely think this team can make the playoffs. They are in a pretty tough division, though. Um, because, you know, the Saints normally play well, the Buccaneers have a tendency of playing well, especially now with their new roster, and then the Falcons, like, are very hit or miss, like, they either play really well or they're terrible. But anyway, let's simulate here, and I'll let you know what the record is at the midseason. Alright, so here at Week 9, we beat the Packers, actually a tough team to defeat there in Week 8, and we are 5-2, and two. so we are playing better this season, much better this season uh, than last year. The Saints are 5-3, and three, Falcons 2-5, and five, Buccaneers 1-6. Looks like that draft pick might actually be really solid after all. But this quarterback is a superstar. That is amazing. I knew this guy was going to be good. I kind of figured he'd have a good development trade. I'm very happy I went with him instead of Bridgewater this season. And then defensively, show me the outside linebacker. He is not an X Factor, but he is a superstar, so I'll definitely take that. Conley has star development, and this defensive tackle is still not yet revealed. But still, that was an incredible draft from us. We landed a bunch of different starters, and these guys are gonna be starters for a very long time. Um, let's see if we can actually get this breakout player challenge with DJ Moore. I mean, it's not gonna happen, especially in simulation. Like, I feel like receivers never get over 200 yards in simulation or four touchdowns. Um, but I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, Christian McCaffrey needs to come back to the team. And of course, he did sign an extension in real life. Let's just give him a pretty big contract. I know his contract in real life was huge. So I'll just give him this one, I guess. He wants me to improve the bonus. Okay, I will. Um, Evan Ingram, I want to bring back to the team. Let me go over everyone else. So Curtis Samuel, I definitely want back. Taylor Moten, I think I do one back on the team as well, and that is going to be it. Just these three guys here along with Christian McCaffrey. Okay, so everybody aside from Christian McCaffrey came back to the team. Those three other guys accepted right away. Let's see if we got this breakout challenge. I very much doubt it. Yeah, we didn't get it. It's okay. I didn't actually think we were going to. That is crazy to actually hope for because, like I said, I feel like the most I've ever seen a receiver get in simulation is like 150 yards, maybe. And even that's kind of pushing it. But Christian McCaffrey, he wants a bigger bonus. Let's give him 6.2 instead. He is going to accept that. So we have him back on the team for seven more years. <laughs> Let's go. All right. So the team is in the playoffs. We got a first round bye as well, beating the Buccaneers. We finished 12 and 4, 9 and 7 for the Saints, 6 and 10 for the Falcons, 5 and 11 down there for the Buccaneers. This quarterback, almost 4,000 yards, 35 touchdowns, 10 picks. Actually a worse season than what Teddy Bridgewater did for us. Kind of sucks, but of course this guy's superstar developed. 
development. He's going to be into the 90s in like a couple of seasons anyway. Uh, Christian McCaffrey, 4.6 yards per carry, 8 touchdowns. Palmer had 8 touchdowns as well on the ground. That's a good season for him there. Receiving wise, DJ Moore is very good. 88 for 1,100 yards, 10 touchdowns. Curtis Samuel, over 1,000 yards again, 12 touchdowns for him. Blocking seemed a lot better this year, and it definitely was. Ali Marpet seemed to make a pretty big difference here on the offensive line. Defensively, we have 125 tackles for Shaq Thompson. Three picks, three sacks, two tackles for loss. Potential development trade upgrade here for him. We have 10 tackles for loss for Derek Brown, leads the team in that department. 12 sacks for Brian Burns, 9.5 for Chester Green, the rookie, and then 6 for Gross Matos. Shaq Thompson leads our team with 3 picks. Jeremy Chin gets 2, Dante Jackson also gets 2, Andre Smith and Abram Forrest each get 1. We do not have any touchdowns, but we do have a safety from Gross Matos and then 3 blocked kicks. We were 4th in the NFL on offense this season. I feel like defense has to at least be, you know, top half of the league. We were actually 4th on defense as well. Okay, so top five in both of those. That's amazing. So Lucas Palmer actually wins MVP. Didn't expect him to win that, but I guess they took into account, you know, his rushing totals and his rushing touchdowns and whatnot, because then he got about 40 touchdowns, right? So he had 35 passing touchdowns and I think eight rushing touchdowns. So he had 43 total touchdowns, if I'm not mistaken. That's amazing. That is exactly what I wanted to happen. <laughs> okay, I didn't actually expect it to happen, but that's still awesome. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Lucas Palmer. Nobody else from the Panthers. Defensive player of the year goes to Fred Warner, but Shaq Thompson at number four. Offensive rookie of the year is, of course, Lucas Palmer. Defensive rookie of the year goes to Chester Green, the defensive tackle. William Cunningham at number two. Then we have Abram Forrest at number four. Henry Conley at number five. Nobody else then from the Panthers, but still, we got four players. Let's go. Let me get the quarterback upgrade because he is going to be a monster after this season. Okay, so I spent all the experience points. We're going into the divisional round where we have to take on the 8-8 eight and eight Lions. All right, well, let's just check out the development trait of the defensive tackle really quickly before we hop into the game. Uh, the quarterback's up to an 87. That's amazing. But this defensive tackle is an X-Factor. Okay, this might be my best draft ever. It is certainly up there. This draft was remarkably strong. I can't believe that. We got two superstars and an X-Factor, along with another star developing player. Okay, that was one of my best drafts, for sure. Let's hop into the game, though. You know, DJ Moore has a new ability. That's pretty cool. But let's see if we can win. We're in 86, and the Lions are in 81. We should definitely be able to win this game. We have such a better team. Let's go ahead and advance by. If we lose in this round, I'm going to be pissed. Okay, we won 30-14. to 14. We have to go up against the Saints, who are very good in simulation. As you can see, they have the same overall team as we do. We are in the Super Bowl, and we have to take on the Ravens. Okay, I'm not going to hop into this one. I'm just going to advance straight by it. I don't plan on actually playing any of it anyway, so I don't really think there's a reason uh, to go ahead and jump into the game. But let's check out development trade upgrades. I can see a few of them over there. I don't know if you guys noticed, but <laughs> we have at least two more X-Factors on the offense, and probably three. Sadly, the quarterback does not have X-Factor, but both receivers do. This offense is just broken. This is one of the greatest offenses I've built in a long time as well. If you just look at the quarterback, the running back, and the wide receivers, it is insane. And then defensively, anybody up in development, so at least we have Shaq Thompson up to superstar. I don't think anyone else is up in development right here. Um, but this team looks absolutely broken. Let me show you something really quickly in case anyone thinks I cheated. I'm going to show you that I did not. If you look here at drafted, I did nothing in the draft. And then I think player edit is the next thing you're going to want to look at. And then draft class edit. Like, I did nothing. I don't know. I haven't shown that off in a while because I feel like you guys at least trust me. But I remember back early on in this Madden season, a lot of people kept thinking I cheated in my rebuilds to, like, change development traits and whatnot. And I never did. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just, like, that's so boring to me. That takes the fun away of a rebuild. I don't want to just know I'm landing an X-Factor. That's why it was kind of boring in the past Maddens when, like, you knew somebody was going to have Superstar just based on a draft story. I like how the Heisman winner doesn't always have X-Factor now, but there's a pretty good chance of it. Anyway, though, let's advance by this week. We won the Super Bowl. It looks funny. It looks like the Ravens won because it's on that side. I don't know. I feel like we should be the team on the left then, or maybe that's just always the AFC team. No idea. Anyway, we won the Super Bowl, so that's amazing to see. If we're in the Super Bowl again next year, I'll hop in and, you know, go through the celebration and whatnot. Um, but let's see who has to come back to the team at this moment. I don't th really think it's going to be anybody important. Yeah, it's a bunch of backups, so I'm not going to worry about bringing any of those players back to the team. Let's hop into free agency, though, and see who is available to make this team even more of a god squad. We have $29 million to go after some free agents. Keanu Neal is the top free agent. I wouldn't mind him on the team. I feel like I just recently signed him, though. 
And I don't really care. I think I'm still going to go after him <laughs> because he would make this team a lot better. Jeremy Chin hasn't been bad, but he really hasn't developed as well as I wanted him to at this point. So why not get an 87 overall safety if we're able to? 99 points. I'm going to increase that even more just because we have the money and I'm probably only going one more, you know, final season here. Keanu Neal accepted our offer. That makes our defense a lot better. Now let's head into the draft. And I'm really just looking to draft a linebacker at some point here. Hopefully there are some for me to take. So in the draft, we have the third overall pick. And I think the 32nd overall pick, of course, because we won the Super Bowl. Um, there are two players who I really want to take in this first round. I'm probably going to have to trade up for at least one of them. But let me just check really quickly. So it's the Dolphins and the Raiders. So one of these guys is a right outside linebacker. Let me just see if the Dolphins or Raiders are going to take that position. So the Dolphins have an interest in a right outside linebacker. So let me go ahead and try to trade up with them. It is incredibly easy to trade up in drafts. If you guys somehow do not know that by now, it is one of the easiest things to do in this game. Let me see if this works for the last pick in the second round. It's very close. Can we throw in like a third or a, actually I'm gonna throw in a second next year. For the first overall pick, that's all you have to do. <laughs> it is so simple. And now we have three first round draft picks. It's just funny. I did not mean to simulate that pick. Okay, well we got a pretty good looking middle linebacker. But I can't believe I just simulated that draft pick. <laughs> okay. Um, this guy's going to play. But that still makes me sad. Whatever. I wanted an outside linebacker. I guess I'll show you who I want. I mean, this guy won the Heisman, so he probably has a good development trait. It's Rashad Scroggins. <laughs> this is the dude who I was going to take. Very sad that I missed out on him, but instead I'm going to go with Jeremy Burton because this is the other guy who I wanted. And this dude is an 81. Huh. Well, that's one of the highest overalls I have ever seen. 96 speed, 96 acceleration. Horrible man coverage, but really good zone, really good press, good agility. Wow. Yeah, that's a draft pick and a half. Now I could trade back up to get that outside linebacker. I'm not gonna do that. I'll just make sure to remember to check out who he is. Uh, with this pick, I do want to tackle if any are available. I very much doubt there are some here, but let's see, I guess. There are zero first round right tackles, so I guess I'm not going to go with one of those guys. Pretty sad, but maybe we can take like a backup running back or something. Virgil Barrow, early first round talent. Sure. Welcome to the team. Uh, 79. So he's the number two ranked player. These are like the best drafts I've ever had. <laughs> it's just hilarious that drafting can be this easy sometimes and other times. It seems impossible. I guess I shouldn't say impossible, but like sometimes you get classes where the best player is like a 77. And in this class, there was an 81 and that guy was a 79. So I don't really know how to feel about it. I hope this middle linebacker has like superstar development though. I'm very sad <laughs> that I didn't get the guy I wanted, but this dude still looks very good. So I'm not like sad with the draft pick. He's looking like Luke Keekly there though with the number and everything. That's pretty funny. Um, but <laughs> hidden development should at least for him. I mean, it's something. And then, of course, we have an 81 and then a 79. What a first round. That is insane. We probably have the number one, two, and three picks. We do have the number one, two, and three picks. But there's another running back who is technically tied with uh, the middle linebacker. Let me find this outside linebacker. Where is Scroggins? He's a 74. He does have hidden. It's probably X-Factor just because I missed out on him. It is just Superstar, which is still very good. At least it's not X-Factor. So he's, like, identical to the linebacker we drafted last year. Um, even if that Morrison guy has star, like it's not a bad draft pick. He's still very good and he's at least good enough to be like a plug and play outside linebacker for us this next season. Um, but let me mess around with the team and I'll show you what it looks like. This team is going to be nutty. Okay. So after two seasons, so this team is a 90, 93 offense, 87 defense, definitely one of the best teams I have had in a Madden rebuild this season. Um, Palmer's up to a 94 after one year. And he was like, what, like a 77, 78, I think, when we drafted him. He also has 99 short accuracy and 98 medium accuracy. Not good deep accuracy, but I guess that doesn't really matter. 90 speed as well. Yeah, that guy's broken. Um, this offense is unstoppable, it looks like at the moment, with a 94 quarterback, 99 Christian McCaffrey, 91 and 89 receivers then 84 for Robbie Anderson. We even have a backup running back who is good. Then a fourth string running back who has hidden. 
<laughs> he is uh, 24 years old though, so he's also a 55. He's really nothing special. But anyway, he's on the team. I guess that's worth noting. The offensive line is solid on this team. Of course, Evan Ingram is still very good. And then defensively, very colorful on this side of the ball. We have a bunch of superstars. We have an X Factor, some potential X Factors and Morrison and Burton. If Burton turns out to be an X Factor, he might just be the best player I have ever selected based on the overall and the development trait, but we'll have to see. Uh, yeah, this team's very good. I don't really think I have to say too much more. Let's go to the end of the season. Guys, this team didn't make the playoffs. How are you gonna tell me this team missed out on the playoffs? This team went eight and eight. Sure, dude. Sure. The quarterback had 3,700 yards, 30 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Christian McCaffrey had 13 touchdowns, five and a half yards per carry, uh, four touchdowns for Palmer. Nobody over a thousand yards. Curtis Samuel gets pretty close though. Seven touchdowns for him, along with Evan Ingram. The tackles seem to be struggling. Maybe that's the issue here with the offense. 112 tackles though for Burton. We have 15 tackles for loss for Derek Brown, 12 for Chester Green. We have 13 sacks for Brian Burns, 10 and a half for Gross Matos, eight and a half for Chester Green. We have two picks for Henry Conley and then one for a bunch of different players. How did this team miss out on the playoffs? I will never understand this. Conley gets a touchdown. We have a safety from Timmy Morrison. We have two blocked kicks from Christian Miller and then the three players each have one. So we were ninth in the NFL on offense. Defense might have sucked, I guess. Yeah, 25th on defense because that just kind of happens. MVP this year is Matt Ryan. We do have the quarterback though at number seven. He gets close. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Matt Ryan. Our quarterback is at number six. Christian McCaffrey at number eight. Defensive Player of the Year is Eric Hendricks. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Lewis McCann, but we do have Virgil Barrow or Barrow. I think I said Barrow when we drafted him. He is the backup running back we drafted at number two. It's actually pretty cool. Artavius Thornton. I don't know who that is. He's at number 10, though. Defensive Rookie of the Year actually goes to Jeremy Burton, the cornerback. Timmy Morrison at number two. We get to see their development traits as well. So I guess we're going another season. I didn't really expect to. I thought this was going to be the final year. Uh, this team's a 92 overall, and you're telling me they won 8-8. Eight and eight. Oh, that makes me livid. That makes no sense. Whatever. But let's go to the Super Bowl, where it's going to be, you know, a rematch of the most recent Super Bowl in real life. Let me turn on auto scouting and then simulate this. Okay, so let's see if the Chiefs can win again, or will the 49ers get revenge? They do get revenge. 31 to 24. 49ers are going to win. Uh, let's check out development trade upgrades, and let's just see what the development traits of those guys on defense are. So the quarterback's up to a 96. That's incredible. This guy is superstar development, so that's something to see. That's insane. And then defensively, this cornerback only has star. Kind of sad, but it's okay. But Morrison went up to X Factor. Either he had this or he went up to this throughout the season. So he had superstar and he went up to X Factor throughout the season. Okay, well, that's insane. I still have no idea what happened with this team. This is genuinely one of the best teams I've ever had. And somehow they managed to go eight and eight. I just hate how simulation is like a coin toss every single time you simulate. Makes no sense. Uh, but DJ Moore, I went back on the team for a while. We're gonna have to give these guys a lot of money in case they decline. But DJ Moore is a very good receiver and he's coming back to the team. Okay, we're gonna get him for at least one more season. Dante Jackson, I would like back on the team as well. I don't mind if we overpay these guys because I think if we simulate again with this team, there's no way they don't make the playoffs. Uh, let me franchise tag him because I want him for at least this next season. Robbie Anderson, I'll let go. Uh, Will Hernandez, I want. Matt Paradis isn't bad at all, so maybe we should bring him back to the team. We'll have to see. He's kind of old, though. But Will Hernandez, I will bring back for sure. I think Paradis we might be able to get in for agency. So I'm going to probably go that route, maybe try to replace him if I need to. Eli Apple, I don't need. Michael Polardi, I'll bring back to the team. He's certainly not a bad punter. And he's coming back for that pretty small contract. Okay, Graham Gano. I'll give him a contract as well. He's not a bad kicker. He wants to play for a new team. All right, well, my bad, dude. I thought I gave you enough money. Turns out I did not. Let's head into free agency, though, so I guess I'm looking for a center. Really? There's nothing else in particular I really think I need, like, obviously. <laughs> um, but we have $15 million. We can certainly go after a few guys if I need to. So Jr. Alexander's probably here. He's actually not. Very surprising. Chase Young is, though. <laughs> That's funny to see. Uh, Braden Smith is available. We could use some new tackles, so I think I'm going to go after Braden Smith. And then someone's going to play center. We'll figure out who it's going to be. Actually, I'm going to go after Mitchell Schwartz instead. Be nice if we can get him on the team because he's very good. We can give him 102 total points. I think he should accept that. He's the better player for one more season. So let's see if we can get him. Mitchell Schwartz is on the team. Okay, now somebody's going to play center. 
It might be Marpet. We might slide him back inside again. And then we're going to have Mitchell Schwartz play left tackle, I think. Okay, so in the draft, there really is not a specific position I want to target. And that team looks funny against the Shamrocks. But let's just go to pick number 14. I didn't even look at the draft board. Maybe I should have traded up. I don't know. Lenny Smiley. What a name. Um, let's just see if there's anybody here who I want to take. Really good looking quarterback. There's two, actually. Jarrett Paul, mid first round talent. Tanner Owens, mid first round talent. They're both pretty good. Um, there's a really good running back, though. Mid first round talent for him as well. I was thinking about taking a receiver here, but I don't really see anyone I like. Vince Trent is going to be a good player. Mid first round talent for him as well. Let's see if I can find someone with early. You have early first round talent, but I won't really use you. I think I'm going to go with that right tackle. He probably is the best player available. Welcome to the team. He's a 78 with normal, rank number two. Drafted him at number 14. He's definitely not too bad, but I think I'm still going to have Taylor Moten start at right tackle. And then, honestly, like, I should just simulate to the end of the draft. I don't really want anything in particular here. I could use a new receiver. Maybe I can trade the starter on draft pick away for a receiver. I don't know how valuable this pick is, though. Okay, so there we go. We got Robert Woods on the team. I'm giving away a Taylor Moten. I'm just going to have the right tackle I drafted start there. And the pick we have right now. Um, so Robert Woods is definitely a good third receiving option. Let's go to the end of the draft. And if this team doesn't make the playoffs again, I don't really know what to say. Like, I don't really think there's anything more I could have done. Um, but hopefully the luck is on our side. And this draft was incredibly short. I apologize for that. But like I said at the beginning of it, there really wasn't like any position I really needed in particular. Um, we didn't really draft that many people in total. We only drafted five, but we have a 78 overall. So definitely not that bad. Let's take a quick look at the draft class though. Let's see who the best player was. It was actually a three-way tie for 78s. Robert Saxton, who went to the Shamrocks. And then George Mayer, a defensive tackle. I could have went with that guy as well, but I decided to go with Humphrey. Definitely a good-looking draft class. There's a bunch of 77s here. Um, but let's go ahead and advance. I'll get the team all ready, and I'll let you know what it looks like. Okay, so the team here for the final season is a 91 overall, 95 offense. I think that said 88 defense. Um, so we have a 96 overall quarterback. I hope he can have a better season than he did last year. Like, he didn't play poorly last year, but I definitely expected more, seeing that he is a 96. Uh, Christian McCaffrey's been insane for us this entire time. I expect him to do well once again. The receiving duo has been very good this whole time as well. Uh, the offensive line struggled a little bit last year. Hopefully the new tackles can help out with that though. And Evan Ingram has been solid for us this whole time. The defense wasn't great last year. I hope they can go back uh, to the form they were two years ago because then we were ranked fourth Last year, it was like 30th or like 25th or something bad. I don't know. The defense certainly is not bad, though. So hopefully they can, you know, just play well. Also, we landed this guy at some point. I don't know who that is. Douglas Harding. All right, whatever. He's a star developing linebacker, I guess. Uh, but anyway, I will see you guys at the end of the season. So we made the playoffs. We got a wild card going 12 and 4. Uh, the Falcons also have this record. 9 and 7 for the Saints, 3 and 13 for the Buccaneers. The quarterback finally had an incredible passing season. Thank you. 4,300 yards, 38 touchdowns, 5 interceptions. Uh, Christian McCaffrey had 14 rushing touchdowns, 5.2 yards per carry. Lucas Palmer had 8 rushing touchdowns. Virgil Barrow had 9. That was a great rushing season there from the team. DJ Moore was very good this year. 9 touchdowns for him, 6 for Christian McCaffrey, who actually had 714 yards. Okay. 706 for Robert Woods with 6 touchdowns. Evan Ingram gets 7 touchdowns. Curtis Samuel didn't really do all that much down there. Pretty strange. Uh, Blocking-wise, the offensive line was much better than before. Only three players letting up sacks. That's actually very interesting. Defensively, we have 92 tackles there from Keanu Neal. We have 15 tackles for loss for Chester Green. We have 10.5 sacks for Brian Burns and Gross Matos. 4.5 for Cunningham. Not too bad there for him, considering he's not really pass rushing. Uh, two picks for Shaq Thompson, Troy Pride Jr., Keanu Neal, and Jeremy Burton. One pick then from Timmy Morrison, Rashawn Morris, Henry Conley, and Abram Forrest. We have no touchdowns, safeties, or blocked kicks. It's okay, though. We are second in the NFL on offense and then 15th in the NFL on defense. So Lucas Palmer wins MVP again. That's amazing to see there. NFC Offensive Player of the Year is Lucas Palmer. Christian McCaffrey at number four. Defensive Player of the Year is actually Bud Dupree. Not a player I've seen in a while, <laughs> you know, winning one of these awards. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Del Collins. I don't think we have anyone here from the Panthers, though. Defensive Rookie of the Year, we probably don't have any Panthers here either. Best quarterback is, of course, Lucas Palmer. Love to see that. Best running back is Ezekiel Elliott, but Christian McCaffrey right behind him at number two. 
Best wide receiver is DJ Moore. That's awesome to see as well. Best offensive lineman is Zach Martin. Ali Marpet though at number three, Mitchell Schwartz at number five. Best defensive lineman is Aaron Donald, but then we have Brian Burns and Gross Matos at five and seven. The best linebacker is Bud Dupree. Best defensive back is Jalen Ramsey. Best kicker is Steven Hauschka. Is our kicker on the list? He is not. I think it's actually Randy Bullock at the moment. <laughs> we signed him in free agency uh, pretty recently. Um, but let's spend these experience points. We shouldn't have all that many. We only have one for DJ Moore. Okay, he's going to go up to a 95 overall. I pretty much have all the upgrades I want, so I'm not going to bother you know, spending the experience points here. But the 49ers are an 86, and we are a 93 overall. Please don't tell me we lose this game. We ended up winning that game, and now we have to take on the Dallas Cowboys, who are also 12-4. and four. They're an 84 overall though, Cub on. We almost have a 10 point overall advantage over this team. Let's go to the conference championship. Can we make it? We cannot make it. That's so upsetting, but at least we won a Super Bowl with this team. You know, the second year, I'm pretty sure it was. That's at least a success in my eyes. Now the Browns and the Cowboys in the Super Bowl. Let's see if it was going to win. I think it's going to be the Browns. And they do not win. 28 to 20, the Cowboys are going to win that one. But this team was incredible. I'm happy that, you know, we were able to build such a god squad. This quarterback's up to a 90 90, also is up to X Factor. That's remarkable. Plus one to morale. He would be a true uh, 99 if we went another season, but it's okay. This offense is just something else, man. Four X Factors here on the offense, and then a superstar. Uh, backup running back and a superstar left tackle. That's insane. And then defensively, anybody up in development trade? I think Keanu Neal is up to superstar. Brian Burns is also up to a 95 overall. He had an incredible rebuild here for us. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.